Almost forgot. On my front bag, I have my little llama. So this is my Ecuadoriano llama. He's from Ecuador. I used to have one from Peru and he fell off, so this guy has some safety gear to hold him on. But yeah, I like having my little llama riding up front always with me. And he just bounces along here. And yeah, he likes bike packing too. All right, hey guys, Carl here, and I'm going to walk you through my setup, which I recently used to ride the Great Divide mountain bike route. Here is the Pony, my 2015 Salsa El Mariachi, and I'll walk you through my setup, what I use, and how I use the gear, how I pack it, what makes sense for me, and uh, what I've learned through my bike packing experience. My setup is definitely not an ultralight setup. I would say it's more of a world touring setup or long-term touring setup because I do have cooking gear and some other, other kind of comfort gear that's nice for long-term. But if you wanted to go ultralight, you could use the same setup and just remove those items. I have my rear bag, which is a backpack. It's a waterproof backpack. It's 20 liters. And I just strap it on top of a rack using bungee cords. And that works really nicely. Uh, inside this bag, I keep my gear, which I only use once per day. I take the, all these items out in the evening and I put them back in the next morning. And then I don't touch this bag for the entire day. Then on top here, I have a smaller bag, a 10 liter waterproof bag, and this is just for food. My triangle bag is a six liter Ortley bag. I keep mostly electronics inside of here. Then I have Revelate Designs Sweet Roll. It's a large, holds 15 liters. You can open it on both sides, which is really nice. And I keep all my clothes inside of here. Up front, I have this old school Cycling Pro bag. It's probably somewhere between 20 and 30 years old. I keep electronics inside of here. Uh, this bag is not waterproof, but I have ways to make it waterproof. So I'll tell you about that when we get there. Okay, so now I'll go through these small little bags. So this bag in front of my seat post holds my Leatherman, a multi-tool. Uh, I just think it's so important to have these two items easily accessible. So you're not digging in the bottom of your triangle bag or somewhere else, because you know what, these things are heavy and they'll always sink to the bottom. My multi-tool is just a Crank Brothers M18, pretty basic, but I can fix almost anything on my bike with this tool. Then I have my Leatherman. It's a little bit heavy for people who are just trying to go ultra light, but I really like that it has a scissors. Scissors is so valuable. And just being able to actually grab something and torque on it is very, very nice as well. So I'm somebody who can't live without a Leatherman. Uh, this is also my only knife, so I use it for cooking and everything. Those two things live right here. Little rear bag on my seat post here. My repair kit, so this just has some tire levers in it, patches, some, some spare brake pads, a little bit of dental floss for sewing, small little sewing kit, and some spoke nipples, uh, extra valve, a little bit of duct tape, I don't know, some pretty basic stuff, not that much. Here is a tubeless patch kit. These patches aren't for the tubeless kit, but uh, that's an extra bearing. But yeah, so this is tubeless patch kit, some quick links uh, right here. And I also have this little valve here. This adapts from Schrader to Presta, so I can go to a gas station and use their Schrader compressor to set up my tires tubeless. Also have a little razor blade in here, just nice for being able to cut something. Then just some grease. I don't need to grease my bike very often, but 
just nice to have. And my lock, uh, it's just a simple, simple lock, pretty small. And this allows me to lock my rear tire through my triangle. And with this long cable, it's really nice to have. And this can go from the lock to my tent or anything. When you're running into a shop for five minutes, or if you are camping and you're nervous that you might not be in the best area, uh, more, I would do the Great Divide without any sort of lock. I think that I would feel fine with that. Uh, I would bike in a lot of the world without any lock, but if you're going into cities occasionally, it's just a nice thing to have for peace of mind. And final small bag. We have this little top tube bag. It's about one liter, one inner tube, and there's a second. So two inner tubes because you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere losing tubeless and not have tubes. I, there's a lot of weight to carry, but good to have. This is something new I've never carried, but it's fiber fix. I thought that if I broke something big, I would try this out and it's carbon fiber tape. So this should allow you to make some pretty large repairs to a rear rack or something else that fails. On this last trip, I did break my train stays and my plan was to attempt to fix it with this if I wouldn't have been in a populated area. Luckily, I was in a populated area and I was able to get a ride and I did actually get my bike repaired in Phoenix from the Bicycle Fabrication Supply, which is a great place. So thank you to Andrew. So I do have new chain stays here. Now to my water setup. I have big Nalgene mounted to my down tube. It's uh, one and a half liters. I have a voil strap. This is a black diamond voil strap. Voil is just a brand, but keeps it secure here. So that's one and a half liters. Then on my fork, uh, just mounted with electrical tape, I have two water bottles. So one water bottle on each side of my fork. Uh, so one and a half liters up front, my down tube, another one and a half liters, so three liters. Then on the outside of these bags here, I have this little platypus water bag. So this is two liters. So now I'm up to five liters of water. As you can see, I have this connected with beaners in case it falls, normally it's strapped. There I'm up to five liters. And if I really need to, I can fill up my water filter with three more liters of water and I'm up to eight liters of water. Uh, like I said, on top, I have my bag for food. I keep it attached with a small little beaner to my seat. And that way I don't lose this bag if it falls off because of these straps coming loose. So right now I don't have any food in here, but what I do have is the essentials. I have my spork right here. This is just an outsmart fork. I like it, it has a little knife on it, fork and spoon. I have a bowl. It's nice to be able to cook, make your oatmeal. Afterwards, cook a pot of coffee. So it's really nice to have a bowl. Then I just have a folding cup as everyone needs a cup, right? So <laughs> there are my essentials. And this is empty. Normally inside of here, you know, it's oatmeal for breakfast, pasta or rice for dinner, and then tortillas either with peanut butter and jelly or tuna for for lunch. I like to keep it simple with the food. And now into the 20 liter backpack. Uh, like I said before, I only take this off once per day. Everything in here, items, which I only have to get at once per day. First thing, item we're moving out of here is my stove. This is just a whisper light stove, multi-fuel, which is essential for traveling around the world. You don't have to rely on canisters. Stove sits in the bag inside these two pots. So the pots do not take up very much room. This is about one liter. Uh, here's the stove. I have it in here with the windscreen, pump, stove, and then my lighter. I always pack my lighter with the stove. That prevents you from searching later on for your stove and going crazy. Pump goes into a fuel bottle. This fuel bottle holds gasoline. The reason I use gasoline is because you can find gasoline anywhere in the world. And this amount of gasoline will last me about one week of cooking every day. 
Uh, I connect the bottle to my front fork using a little zip tie, which is removable, but this just ensures that my fuel bottle does not fly off as I'm descending a big hill. So fuel bottle stays nicely on the front fork and no worry of losing it in the middle of nowhere and not being able to get a new bottle. All right, next item is my tent. This is a big Angus copper spur ultralight and it's the bike packing version which means the tent poles are actually shorter, which is really nice for being able to pack it wherever you want. Then I have my stakes packed separately. So here's my tent. I have my water filter in here. This is just a three liter gravity filter system. It's really nice. Uh, I like it a lot more than a pump system. It's just quicker, easier. And also I can use this three liter bag for water storage if I really need to get extra water. Here's my sleeping bag. It's a lightweight sleeping bag, a little bit less than what you typically want. I think it's rated to probably 50 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. It's, it's pretty lightweight. Normally inside of my sleeping bag, I keep my sleeping pad packed and this is just a Sea to Summit ultralight sleeping pad. I don't remember what the model name is, but it's comfortable enough. <laughs> Not super comfortable, but it works. I can sleep on it. Okay, also in here I keep, what have I got? Have a little thing of bug spray, uh, Repel 100, 98% DEET, so this is powerful stuff. I did not use it on the Great Divide. Just an extra tent pole replacement section in case I break a tent pole. And then I have one of those little emergency sleeping blankets. And this is just in case it gets really cold, I get stuck in a blizzard or anything like that. I know I have this as a extra layer of security in case the situation gets rough. So, uh, if I'm traveling internationally, I keep my passport inside this bag as well. Also on the back, I keep this uh, platypus two liter water bag. This is just an option to carry more water and I strap it to the, the bags on the outside, keep it attached with a carabiner again, so it's not going to fall off and sit on the side of the road. I actually did find this on the side of the road uh, just before the Great Basin on the Great Divide. So I was hoping to get some extra water storage right before the Great Basin and this magically appeared. So somebody else lost it, don't be the person to lose it. Use an extra carabiner. This string, which I have here, is actually part of my bear line, which for the Great Divide, you need to store your food uh, away from your tent, hopefully up in a tree. You can use a canister or a bear bags, but I just like using my food bag, a little bear line, and throwing my food up in a tree, and I sleep soundly, knowing that it's away from me. So don't sleep on your food. Don't invite a bear to your camp. Next up, we have the triangle bag. Inside here, like I said, I carry lots of electronics. If I wasn't filming videos, I could carry half as much stuff in here as I currently do. And I could probably actually get rid of at least one of my big bags. So I'll just go through it. Here I have my charging system for electronics. Uh, I need one adapter for my drone and the other one is just for USB. So I have two adapters. It seems like a lot. It is a lot, but because I carry a drone, I need to carry two. So two adapters, a bunch of USB cables, and I can charge maybe six items at once. Here I have two little containers. These carry batteries for my cameras. I just have two because one is for charged batteries. The other one is for dead batteries. That just keeps me sane. And yeah, it might be, take up a little bit more space, but it works for me. I also have my bike pump in here. This is a Lazine and it's the high volume floor pump. It's a wonderful pump. I keep it inside my frame bag because pumps which are mounted to the outside of your bike, they often fall off. People lose pumps and this keeping it inside of here also keeps it clean because everything which is on the outside of my bike gets dusty. Have a selfie stick because everybody loves selfies. Headlamp. This is a black diamond, I believe, icon. And it's overkill for, as far as a headlamp goes, but it has a really bright red light. 
Red lights are awesome in the evening. They don't hurt your night vision. And this light has about as bright of a red light as you can get. Here's my front light. It's a 700 lumens. And I believe the name of the company is Night Bright. And it's very bright. This gets mounted right here on the front on my fork. So nice little mount. Don't even have to think about it. I don't have to wear it. So it also has a flashing mode. And that's really nice for when you're in a city and if, it, if the traffic's really bad. So I really, really like this light. And it's also nice if you ever have to ride at night. I have another big, it's just some USB cables, a couple of little charging items, AA batteries. Another big, this is just memory cards. Like I said, I'm recording. I go through lots of memory cards. And here's an external power pack. It's RAV power. This is somewhere over 20,000 milliamp hours. And I carry two of these, one's in my front bag. But this is RAV power, the other one's Anker. They're both pretty good. All right, also in here I have three spokes. I keep them inside my triangle bag. Don't even really know they're there. It's a nice place and not going to lose them. All right, now I'm going to walk you through my front bag. On the outside here, I hold oil just because I oil my chain every day. Next to my front bag, you can see I have my bear spray. This is just to keep away any mean bears when you encounter them on the trail. So this is just nice and easy to get at. I can be riding my bike and cruising along, see a bear and I'm ready to go. So you need bear spray for the Great Divide mountain bike route. Absolutely essential. All right, now to my front pack. I have a little pouch in here are my cosmetics. You got to look good on the trail. And I do not have very many cosmetics in here. Toothbrush, toothpaste, some hand sanitizer, and a little bit of face lotion for those days when you really get burned. Uh, also in here, not too much. And also some earplugs. That's about it, some ibuprofen. I only take ibuprofen after biking, never during. Okay, like I said before, this bag is not waterproof, but I can make it waterproof. And one way is this little bag, which goes over it. Just a waterproof cover, like for a backpack. Uh, that does a pretty good job. I also have a waterproof bag, five liters, inside which I can pack the electronics, which I keep up here. So if I need to, I pack my electronics inside this five liter bag. And it doesn't matter if the bay, my front bay gets wet. So here I have my drone remote, my drone and extra battery. I have two extra batteries for the drone. So Mavic Air, uh, it's treated me really well for at least two years since I've had it. Uh, I have a tripod, just a little mini tripod. And with this tripod, plus that selfie stick I showed you earlier, I can make a slightly taller tripod, which is really lightweight. <laughs> And I have just an extra battery pack. So that's everything from the main compartment of the front bag. On t up top here, I have some miscellaneous items. Have my uh, sunscreen, uh, very essential. And some postcards to uh, send to Patreon members. Here I have some from New Mexico, which still need to get sent out. So sorry, Patreon supporters. <laughs> Those will get sent out soon. Have my headphones. Uh, just sometimes you want to listen to music, podcasts, audiobooks. Also up here, I have an extra phone. This is for navigation. In case one phone dies, I can use a second phone. This wouldn't be necessary for the Great Divide because you could always buy a, another phone if you destroyed one. But some places of the world, that's not quite possible. So I always carry a backup phone. I have a compass and some electrical tape because as you noticed, may have noticed, I like mounting stuff with electrical tape. Also very good for repairing. I have a pen, water purification tablets. I also have my rear light. This is just a red light. It's the same company as my front light. Nice and bright. 
and I can mount it onto my helmet, which I just have a little Velcro strap on my helmet and it's nice and easy to mount. Works well and I can take it on or off nicely being mounted on my helmet. This is nice and tall and that makes me visible to large trucks. So up front, here's my cockpit. Have two nice big bull horns. Can grip them any way I want. Really comfortable. I don't ride with gloves, so this just gives me extra comfort. Other things I have here up front, just my phone for navigation. Uh -huh. And I just use a GPX track in an application called Osmond. This works really well. And I have my sunglasses stored up here in front. I keep a carabiner through the nose and this just keeps them from falling off and disappearing. Because I've lost many pairs of sunglasses. The components I use on my bicycle. So uh, for the most part, this bike is fairly stock, although everything has been replaced <laughs> at least once. But I, uh, starting with the saddle, this is just a Brooks. It's the B17. Saddle is part of the reason why I don't wear padded shorts because it's broken in and I can ride on it all day long without issues. But that does take time. Just Crank Brothers uh, pedals, an older mallet version, and they allow me to clip in or ride unclipped nicely, which is good for downhill. I think any mountain bike pedal, which gives you the option to ride clipped or unclipped comfortably, uh, is great for touring off-road. My rack is just a uh, surly rack. Uh, pretty durable. I have cracked it, but been able to get it rewelded. It's aluminum, so it's a little bit harder to get it rewelded, but that works. Uh, everything else is pretty basic. I mean, hydraulic brakes. Uh, I'm running a three by 10 and running tubeless in both of my tires. This one's, con the front has been uh, constantly wet, but that's okay. I just put more fluid inside of it. I have a suspension fork. I think running a suspension fork or rigid are the best options. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're the only two options, but uh, I like a suspension fork. It's a little bit more comfortable and I lock it out on the climbs. Uh, I don't know. It's not too, not too much out there. Just use whatever bike you have and go ride. Uh, you can upgrade little things here and there as you wish. Front bag is empty and the only thing to still go through is my sweet roll which holds all my clothes. On the left side I have it marked with red electrical tape and on the right side I have it marked with blue electrical tape. Uh, blue side is for cold and waterproof gear. The uh, red side is for warm, warm weather gear. So this just makes it so when I go to grab some item of clothing I only have to open one side and I'm in and out quickly. I learned this trick from always going crazy when I had a paneer set up because you can open one paneer, look for something. Item is always going to be in the opposite side. So it's nice to mark one of your paneers and then you know what items are in each paneer. Uh, first things first, I think it's really important that all your clothes can work together. So basically I can wear every item of clothing which I have in my sweet roll. So that means that I can dress from weather for um, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, I don't know, 35, 40 degrees Celsius to uh, below freezing. So uh, it is, I don't know, that means you don't have to carry as many clothes as you would otherwise. So give me a quick second and I will change into the clothes I typically wear at the beginning of my day and uh, just go from there. So uh, one quick second and I'll be back. All right. Uh. All right. So this is how I would typically start my day. Uh, thank you guys. Really? That's so nice. <laughs> oh my god. 
โอเคมันนึกคำซะใหอ All right. So this is how I would typically start my day. Just starting from the bottom, I have my cycling shoes. These are Pearl Izumi's. They're the XL Divide. They're really nice. I think any mountain bike shoe has a little bit of flex in it. It's going to be a good shoe. I have just a midweight pair of socks. They're a mix of wool and synthetic. I have my knee warmers. Which have seen better days, but I really like starting the day with knee warmers. It just warms up my knees, and I don't know—I don't get achy knees early in the morning. Then I have my shorts, pretty typical shorts. But what I really like about these shorts is they have zipper pockets, so I can zip them and actually keep what I have in my shorts inside my shorts, whether it be going walking into a little store or. Uh, Doing something else. So zippered pockets are super nice to have. Uh, I don't wear uh, any padding, uh, like a chamois shorts or anything like that. Uh, but that's up to you. If starting out, I would definitely wear some padded shorts just to save your butt a little bit of pain. Uh, then I have my base layer for my upper, which is just a long sleeve uh, thermal. Uh, this isn't wool. This is synthetic, but wool or synthetic. And then my banana shirt. Uh, banana shirt is really nice to have. Uh, I like buttons, and uh, you know I can unbutton this fully, and it allows me to get the benefits of not wearing a shirt, but all the but the sun protection. Of wearing a shirt, so I really like banana shirts. I believe that the bananas uh, probably scare away the bears. Uh, and one benefit of a banana shirt is that it's yellow, and I think it helps my visibility a little bit when I'm riding on paved roads with cars. So, banana shirt is absolutely essential. And right now I have this hat, but. I actually don't have a hat with me. I just have my helmet. So here's my helmet, and I mean this is pretty typical way to start a day on a on a nice day. All right. All right. So now I'm wearing a lightweight layer of pants and one more Hawaiian shirt, which is. Also, a button-up shirt. So this is actually my shirt I like to wear for going out in the city. It's kind of a dressier shirt, and it also works for biking as well. Uh, now with two layers, I'm a little bit warmer. I have lightweight pants. These are very breathable. And uh, when I reach into my bag, these are the first two things I grab. So, <laughs> all right. Changing into even warmer clothes. All right. Okay, and now I have my jacket. This is just a pretty lightweight puff, but with all my layers on, this is really warm. It has a hood, and uh, yeah, now I'm ready for pretty cool weather. If I'm going down a big pass early morning, I'll definitely throw this on right away. Uh, I mean, the reverse is opposite. If I have a big climb early morning, I'll typically dress a little bit lighter because I'm going to be working harder. So uh, this would be a pretty warm. Pr this, this would be pretty warm clothes clothing to wear early morning. But, all right, on to the next. All right. Now I'm probably dressed about as warm as I would ever be dressed while biking. I have my raincoat on. This works as a windbreak. Uh, I have flaps underneath my arms, which is really nice for cooling off a tiny bit. And then I have my rain pants on, which also work as wind pants. So 
uh, my outer shell is on uh, and I can bike in pretty pretty cold weather wearing this gear uh, my one other item of shell are let's see if I can grab them quickly these gloves here so these are large waterproof mitts I actually just carry the liners uh, if I was in really cold weather I would carry the inners but just these liners keep my hands pretty warm keep them dry which is really important in the rain or snow so just these two liners do a lot for my hands so now I can be almost fully waterproof uh, well, I'm missing my hat but yeah this is I'm dressed for pretty cold weather now uh, yeah and what else do I have in my clothing bag not a whole lot but let's see one fresh clean pair of boxers so that's important two really thick wool socks for cold weather or for sleeping uh, some long underwear typically for sleeping could also wear them riding but i prefer to use the just the knee warmers which i'm currently wearing uh buff so i can wear this underneath my helmet or i can wear it as a scarf as well just for warmth and then bandana another thing protect the face two lightweight socks so i'm carrying a total of three pairs of socks and that also gives me an option to almost always have one pair of dry socks and then my little my little skull cap so i like wearing this under my helmet i don't believe and i have no more clothing so i'm wearing almost all my clothing i could put these on if i wanted to these the hat and the buff those could go on easily and I mean these are just extra pair of socks and boxers so yeah almost wearing all my clothing right now thank you everyone for watching the video I hope you enjoyed it please click subscribe to watch more bikepacking videos as I release them and if you have any suggestions for future videos uh, please let me know write in the comments let me know what you think all right, see you later.